Welcome to Kids Church Online. Big point. When I fill my life with God's promises, I will speak those promises to others. Hey kids, today's object lesson is about wearing and showing love to others. Let's take a look at both Tundra and Ted here. When we take a look at them, what do we see? It's just Tundra and it's just Ted. That's it. We see them and we look at them and what is there. But God in the Bible calls us to wear and show love to others. Wearing and showing love means being able to show love to other people no matter what the circumstance and being able to make a good first impression and showing love to others instead of judging them. So let's say that we have shirts and the shirts represent love or symbolize love. Now Ted puts on the shirt. Now we take a look at Ted. What's the first thing we see? The shirt. That's just like what God calls us to do. When God calls us to wear love, He wants us to put love first so that when other people look at us, they see love. Love is a very contagious thing, kids, and when love is applied to us, we spread it onto others so that others may see the love that God has instilled in us. So just like Tundra and Ted over here, I want you to remember, put on your shirt of love and show love first. Memory verse. Set your affections on things above, not things on earth. Colossians 3 verse 2. Today's main points are... Point 1. Christian character. Point 2. Forgive one another. Point 3. The word of Christ dwelling in us richly. Okay, we have already taken a look into chapters 1 and 2. Really remarkable, huh? How the Holy Spirit uses a local matter to show us general truths that are still up to date in 2019. Good, but now towards your question. How exactly do I put this into practice? How can I live in dependence on the head who is Christ? To show us how we can live depending on the head in heaven, the Holy Spirit uses the Apostle Paul to write two great chapters. Wonderful, isn't it? A chapter for everyday life and a chapter where he really goes into the issue. So, spiritual battles. To understand chapter 3, you must understand this sentence. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. How this works is seen in the previous verses. To die with Christ and to be resurrected with Christ. This means that our true identity, our I, is no longer here on earth. This is difficult to believe because we're still here physically on earth. But spiritually, we're already in heaven. Imagine this, your friend is only getting married in a few days, but he really radiates his joy just through how he looks around. You think to yourself, in his head, he's already in his honeymoon. Now, I say this with all reverence, in spirit, we should already be in our honeymoon, with our groom in heaven, there where you actually belong. And this is what the verse says, set your minds on things that are above. If in the spirit you are already in heaven, then the soul and the body will also live heavenly, not only slightly shown, but full of energy. Because our world of thoughts influences our actions, the heavens rule the earth. It is simply brilliant how these verses show this. The next verses go on like this. First, what happens spiritually and then how we should apply it practically. We have died spiritually, so we should practically kill our members. We are resurrected in heaven, so we should think on the things that are above. Spiritually, we have undressed ourselves from the old man, so practically we should flee from evil deeds. Spiritually, we have put on the new man, therefore we should practically put on and show his qualities. Amazing, is it? Become practically what you already are spiritually. Heavenly truth determine earthly behavior. You can see even more concretely how these truths should be implemented in the relationships between man and woman, parents and children, masters and servants. And today we would probably say employer and employee. This is really super practical. The master or employer should deal properly with his servants or employees because he also has a Lord in heaven. Good, so now we are left with chapter 4 and it's about spiritual battles. 
In these, we can only be victorious if we fight in close connections to the head in heaven. And this is practically expressed through prayer. A Christian remains constantly in prayer and through this receives wisdom from above on how to live out the kingdom of God here on earth. Closing up, the Apostle gives us a long list of people who are an example to us and encourage us to continue. God has given you a ministry. And the question is, do you depend on the glorified Christ? Or did you just give yourself a break? Keep on. The Lord is coming soon. Go grab your parents and answer these questions with us. Why is it important for us to memorize scripture? Why should we fill our minds and hearts with good things? Who gives wisdom? Who is honored when our life is full of good things? Hey guys, so today we're talking about the book of Colossians. And the book of Colossians is a book written by the Apostle Paul. And in this book, Paul talks a lot about who Jesus is. And one of the things he tells us is that we are God's chosen people. That when we accept Jesus to live in our hearts, we accept that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior and he died to forgive us for our sins, then we become God's chosen and holy people. We become, the Bible says, that we become holy, dearly loved, clothed, and we that God wants us to clothe ourselves, to act with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness. He wants us to act the way Jesus did, because when Jesus came to earth, he acted in a certain way that was pleasing to God, and he acted as, as an example. You know how we all, we all have role models in our life, role models that we want to follow and be more like. Well, our ultimate role model is Jesus. And Jesus acted with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And God called us to act like that too. And in Colossians chapter 3 verses 15, the Bible says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Now what that means is that, you know, we talk the Bible, it says, as since as members of one body. That might be a little bit confusing, but what it means is that when we accept Jesus, we are we are accepted into this family. We're all into God's special family. And what that means is that when we look around at our other fellow Christians and even fellow, fellow humans, we're not so different from one, one, from one another. You know, we have individual differences. I might like arts, I might like piano, I might like music, I like, might like that a little more than I like sports. You may love sports a lot, we all have differences, but at the end of the day, we're all human. We all make mistakes, we're all not perfect, but we all have a God that loves us and wants to forgive us for our sins if we ask. But the thing is, guys, not everyone knows Jesus. In our lives, I bet you if you think about it, there's at least one person in your life that doesn't know Jesus and who is not in this special family. And when you think about it, if you are Christian, you are accepted into this special family of like where you serve a God who forgives you for everything. You don't have to be scared that he's not gonna forgive you. So how awesome is that to have a God that always forgives us? As Christians, we serve an amazing God who loves us so much. And when, this is incredible good news that there is a God out there who loves us so much. And you know, when there's good news, you wanna tell people. If something really good happens in your life, you wanna tell people, right? You're not just gonna keep it to yourself. If you get a brand new bike or you get a new iPad or you get a new, I don't know, whatever the latest thing you want. If you get a brand new something, you're gonna to wanna to tell people. You're gonna to wanna to tell your best friend. You're gonna to wanna to tell, maybe tell your mom, look what happened, look what I got, look what I did. If you do really well in class, you tell your parents, you tell your family, you tell your friends, you tell whoever. Just like that, God wants us to tell people about this amazing good news that he that he sent his son Jesus to die for us and that now we if we accept Jesus we are saved we don't have to live in sin we don't have to live with the guilt of our bad choices we can give that guilt to God we can give everything to God and live in his goodness and live in his promises and God wants us to tell people God wants us to learn about Jesus and tell people about Jesus and that's what we are called to do before Jesus went up to heaven after he rose from the dead, he told his disciples, go and make more disciples. And he's telling us that same thing. God wants us to tell people about him. So today guys, I really encourage you to pray to Jesus and ask Jesus to place a name in your heart. Place the name of someone he wants you to tell about Jesus, to tell about him. And pray that God will show you someone and will open a door to tell you to tell this person about Jesus. 
And in the Bible, in chapter, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And whatever you do, whether in words or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So whatever we do, whether we tell people about Jesus or we show people about Jesus based on how we act, how we act with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness, just like we talked about, whether we do any of that, words or deeds, let all of it be through Christ, through Jesus. So guys, today we're going to pray and I pray that I really hope that you guys will pray with me so that one, that Jesus will put a name in your heart of someone he wants you to reach out to, someone he wants you to tell them, someone he wants you to tell about him. And I pray that, I hope that you guys will also um, pray that God gives you the way to do it, whether he wants you to do it in words, because I promise you, if he wants you to speak to them, tell them about Jesus, he'll give you the words. There are times that the, the door was open and I had the perfect opportunity to tell someone about God. And I was just like, oh, I don't know what to say. But I prayed and I'm like, Jesus, give me the words. And it just, it, he just does. He just gives you the words and you speak and you let him speak through you. It might be a little difficult to think about. It might be a little scary, but Jesus will give you the words. He'll give you the confidence. He'll give you the strength to do it. And if he wants you to do it by actions, maybe by extra kindness when someone's mean to you or extra compassion or extra gentleness, then he'll also give you the strength to to do that so we're gonna pray you ready okay let's close your eyes bow your heads dear god i just thank you for everyone who's watching and i thank you that we all we all have a god that loves us so much that you god love us so much and i pray for anybody who's watching and has not accepted you that you would touch their hearts and that you would show them your love god and you would show them how much you love them and that you would help them be able to make that choice to choose you, God. And I pray right now for everybody else who's watching who is Christian, and I pray that you'd all give us the opportunity to tell someone about you, Jesus. You would all put a name in our hearts of someone you want us to reach out to. And that when we do reach out to this person, you'd give us confidence to say what you want us to say. That you'd give us the words of what to say. That you'd give us the, the strength to do a certain action, whether it's more kindness or more compassion or more gentleness. God, I pray that you would be with every single one of us as we make these choices, as we make the right choices that you want us to do. I pray that you would place people in our lives that you want us to talk to, and you'd help us shine your light for people, that when they see us, they don't just see us, that they see you, they see your light, and they learn, they help, they want to learn more about you, God, and I pray all these things in your name. Amen. So that's it, guys. Thanks for joining us. Really hope you and you had fun. And hopefully God places someone in your heart to reach out to this week. So that's it. Bye. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.